This is the Cliff Yates Show. Personal growth, motivation, inspiration, and philosophies for a great life. Hey, everybody. It is the Cliff Yates Show, and I'm excited again because I have another great guest on today. I mean, he has many books that uh, I'll leave the links for, and uh, we're going to have a great conversation. I think we're all going to learn from and uh, he's got so many books that, you know, a lot of them are, he's really an expert in marketing, marketing with uh, AI, marketing to Generation Z. And I love all those things, but I'm really interested in a book he has, The Seven Principles of the Magic Rock, How Solitude and Nature Anchors Your Mental Health and it Improves Your Leadership Skills and Unleashes Your Creativity. And I, have, I believe in all of that. So let's get right to it. Uh, our great guest today, Mr. Emmanuel Rose. Thanks for joining me, my brother. Thank you, Cliff. I'm really looking forward to talking to you today. Hey, I see from some of your pictures that you're in uh, the Oregon area and, do, and you love fishing. Tell me about your fishing. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I grew up in a fly fishing family, what I call an orthodox fly fishing family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love is, it. There's, one, there's only one way to fish, that's fly fishing. Uh, there's only one way to catch trout that's on a dry fly, you know, those sorts of, uh, those yeah. sorts of maxims. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, I mean, I started, uh, catching fish when I was single digits years old and, and, uh, it's, it's really contributed to, uh, the demand I have to go outside, right. And, and yeah. spend time in, in beautiful places. And, and so in that way, my, my family kind of triggered, uh, so much of this for me as far as appreciating nature and being uh, being in, involved in an, an outdoor activity that uh, like fly fishing that demands that you pay attention to the weather and the time of the year and the bugs and have some skill in order to uh, participate in the sport. I have a renewed, oh, not a renewed, I have an interest in that now because, well, I grew up in a small village in upstate New York and we had, I think it was one of the first fish hatcheries in the country and it's on this creek and, and and they and they just deal with rainbow trout and brown trout and all sorts of trout and i and i never did any any uh fishing for trout uh but i just saw a movie called mending the line have you heard of this no i haven't heard of that one yeah check it out it has to do with the uh, some soldiers that return and one in particular with ptsd and he goes because he wants to he wants to sign back up so he has to get cleared so the psychologist puts him with this older gentleman who's a vet, and he uh, orders him to go with him and learn fly fishing. And it's all about it's all about the mental healing that takes place when he he gets immersed in this fly fishing. Do you do you know the mental aspects of that, or is, do, is that part of your whole nature connection? Yeah, I would say, yeah, you know, unbeknownst to me growing up, but then eventually I understood as I was a young kind of an 18 to 20 year old or like the sound of the river moving on water, right? Or rocks that is in its own way healing. And then having some space away from other people. Uh, and then the, the inspiration behind the, the seven principles was that my, my papu, my grandfather, he would, when we went on these this one river in the central Valley of California, he would always sit on this, this big rock and he'd sit there, and no matter what was going on, whether it was ringing, whether that we were catching fish, we weren't catching fish, he would just sit there and it just takes some time out. And, uh, and, and so that is uh, that what we've been come to realize that psychologically the benefits of a hey, just being in nature, see, be sitting and, and spending time by yourself has a lot of palliative effects and allows for value clarification and this disconnecting from the dopamine drip that we get constantly from email and, and social media and being on the computer. Right. And, and it allows us to be in a more human space. Absolutely. I, I agree. We have a, uh, we actually have an Island. It was, you know, through the generations been passed on down and now to me and my wife, and it's in the thousand Island region of upstate New York. Do you know that area the St. Lawrence river? I don't know that. No, not the East Coast. No. Yeah, the uh, Lake Ontario dumps into it, and then it's a fresh water that actually runs north past Montreal and into the Atlantic Ocean. But it's there's wow. a twenty mile stretch that's just there's over eighteen hundred islands, and we have one of these islands 
of, of our oh, own. Great. And they're all made of these Laurentia granite. They were carved out of this granite. And so I, uh, yeah, so when I, I spend from the uh, mid-May until October there, and it, 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 I just think it is so medicinal to be around. You know, I feel that the water is it's going all over these miles of granite, and I feel like it's a mineral bath. And I, <laughs> yeah, I really feel the health benefits from that, though, right? Disconnecting. And I, and I uh, just recently started fishing again. I, I got away from it because I thought, well, I'm killing the fish. And, and then because uh, I like to snorkel around them. But there's something about changing your focus, right, when you're fishing. And the minute you're kind of your mind drifts somewhere else, man, you get that hit, right? And it's just amazing how that happens, right? Yeah, and it, there is uh, something that's primal and powerful, right, about being able to be the hunter and uh, respecting respecting the animal that you're after and learning about it and participating in its environment and then ultimately eating it and uh, having that, that reverence that uh, you're, it's a part of you and you're a part of it at that point. So uh, I love it. It sounds like an amazing, uh, amazing spot out there. Yeah, it is amazing. Check it out. It's, it's kind of where the, the name of Thousand Island Dressing came from. It came from actually there. Oh. <laughs> one, one of the owners of the Waldorf Astoria in 1903 or four, he, he ended up uh, coming up with the salad dressing, uh, coming up with that formula, naming it, the, he just named it Thousand Island Dressing. He started serving it at the Waldorf in New York, and hence the history of Thousand Island Dressing. Wow, yeah. <clears throat> but it is an amazing place, and I agree. You know, and I, and I recently did a, uh, and you probably know about this, I did a study on myself just, just on negative ions and how being around water actually creates that. And I didn't even know that just being in nature itself but being in nature creates those negative ions. It really is healthy for us and kind of counteracts the free radicals. And, and being around crashing water and moving water really, really creates that. Have you looked into that all? Or are you aware of that? Um, yeah, I, I've seen that. The negative ions, it's the same like with, when you go to the ocean. Right? Yeah. So right, right through where you're, you know, feet in the sand, getting uh, rushed with, uh, with wind. Yes. Energetic differences. Um, and you know, it, it's not, it's not such a mystery, right? Right. Uh, <laughs> we, we, as humans, whatever, we've been around for 10,000 years, the last 250 years, we're very separate culturally from, yeah. from nature as Western European, uh, folks. And, and so it, there's a, a primal part of us that needs to a have some solitude, be, uh, be outside and, uh, experience things that aren't temperature controlled yeah that's right oh my god that's so important wow switching to your uh so you really your expertise is in marketing uh, individuals and businesses right yeah that's right that's why i spent my career is in mar sales and marketing yeah. yeah that's great and i like it. so you're really you really keep up on what's happening right because you have a book on uh marketing to and uh, for generation z people so you're really keeping up on what's happening in the marketing business right because it changes so rapidly it is uh very dynamic it's more dynamic now than it has been um in the last 30 years uh yeah and gen z has been a major shift you know 68 million people in the united states who are between the ages of about 10 and 27. wow and they're the biggest spending force at this point bigger than yeah. the boomers because right? the boomers are spending money on health care and and their yeah. uh, cost of, of housing and, and uh, food. So it's the it's the Z's that are really driving uh, innovation uh, in product development and also in marketing because they're so different than than what you and I are like. Yeah. In terms of how they consume information and where they go to get uh, recommendations for taking care of products and services. Yeah, that's so important uh, to be evolving with that. And of course, a lot of them are, are now growing up. Uh, with that, so it's kind of a natural. But you're right. I get so frustrated with the my fellow boomers, right? Because I guess maybe I'm just an early adopter because I was into I got into marketing when I was doing stand up comedy and writing some books, and so you, you kind of have to learn those things, right? To to uh, negotiate and navigate, you know, how you're going to get your books out there and how you're going to get people to come to your events. So you kind of naturally yeah. have to kind of learn. But I have I get frustrated with my fellow. 
uh, boomers or even my retired uh, law enforcement people because they really they, they don't have any interest of learning new things. A lot of them. Right. Do you find that? Yeah, I think, um, well, there's there's a thing about the human brain and in order to maintain the elasticity and uh, yes, neuroplasticity. Uh, right. Yeah, exactly. So we've got to be constantly learning new things. And, and so that's what drives me into writing these books is, uh, you know, just make forcing myself by structure to be interested in what's going on um, around me outside of yes. myself to uh, remain interesting. That's one of the nice benefits, right? I, That's I, right. I have opinions about things that are important. Uh, and uh, and I have something to share. And I think uh, too many people get into a space of wanting to retire and, and not participate anymore. And and that's the sure path to, uh, to irrelevancy and, and, uh, and loneliness, really. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, and I don't even like to use the, re, you know, the word even. I've just... You know, I've transitioned to another page of life. I haven't really retired, but, you right. know, but people do put that in their mindset. Like, well, you're retired. Why are you doing these things? You don't have to do that. I know I don't have to, but I do it for the joy of it now. Right. So, and I think yeah, that's exactly. the message that I want to send to people. You want to become financially independent so you can live on the total income from your, you know, your continuing assets. And that allows you to work for the joy of it, not because you have to. And I think that's wonderful, right? Yeah, exactly. And I think some of the retirement philosophy that we have in our culture is kind of left over from from the Industrial Revolution. And, you know, we're not we're not broken down, most of us, in the same way that we would have been 100 years ago. Before yeah. The factory and grinding our body to dust. Yeah. Knowledge right. workers, most people are knowledge workers now. Um, That's right. And yeah. So we, we don't have anything to retire from. We're just finally hitting a spot where we know something. Yeah, right. That's right. We're finally getting to that. Why would you want to stop living? Really? I call it. I mean, you know, as much as I love and like, you know, and, and as much as it's important to sit and stare at the water uh, and, and, and be doing nothing, uh, maybe that shouldn't be all we're doing unless that's what you want. And then I'm all for, if that's what you want to do, then uh, I forgot who said it. But hey, that's you. That's you know, you do you. But, you know, that's not I think our camp. Is not in that because I just feel so much more, you know, fulfillment just seems to come from, you know, as many have said, it's just making progress towards a worthy goal uh, gives you fulfillment. And, you know, maybe not even in achieving it, but trying to become more and trying to go after it. Right. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, the, the, the challenge is to be involved enough in things outside of yourself and your family that you've got opportunities to, to share what you know. Um, but not so involved that you don't get to do the stuff you want to do. Also. Right. Yeah. And I get excited about that. I mean, can you imagine, you know, I don't know for, for, I and mean, maybe people growing up with it won't, won't know the significance, but for us to be able to broadcast like this podcast to anybody around the world, video and <laughs> audio, uh, was unheard of maybe even 10 years ago. You couldn't do it. There was too many gatekeepers. You didn't have the, you couldn't afford the systems to have it done. And now you can actually share that message. You can share your creativity. There's actually, I like to say, no more uh, gatekeepers or excuses in not doing it, right? That's true. Yeah, no, the technological uh, advances have been pretty outstanding, uh, you know, all the way to the point where I do podcasts now from remote places with my Starlink that's powered by a solar panel. So, yes. you know, it's, it, it feels like cheating in some ways because it, it it's so simple and so accessible, right? Tell me about that. I got a friend at our island. Of course, I get, I get, uh, I have to get um, my, uh, what do you call it? My signal, my internet signal from uh, from a castle nearby, and it gets beamed to me. Sign of light of sign of light light of, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'm yeah, light of state. Yeah, 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 and then I actually agreed to broadcast to other areas, and then I get it for free. But I have a friend oh, of mine on another island, but he said he's interested in doing the Starlink. So, I, and I said, "Well, I heard you get even better than normal, you know, connectivity, right?" Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty phenomenal. Uh, my setup is to be completely off grid, so yeah. the Starlink consumes about eighty watt hours uh, of power per hour. So I have. A thousand watt hour battery that then is powered by a 400 watt solar panel. Wow! And and for my uses, uh, you know, I work 
when I use it, I usually work about two to four hours a day. Uh, and so that's a week's worth of power if I get no sun. And then if I do get sun, then I have really unlimited uh, ability to uh, to use the satellite to get my work done and charge the batteries. Uh, my solar. Yeah, so he's got a, he's got full power, but he was wondering, uh, can he, there is like a, I was looking into it. Is there like an RV package? He could do it maybe six months out of the year. Just do it for something where he can turn on and off. Are you aware of those plans? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they have a plan for that. Yep. For, or you just, you turn it on and use it as you, as you need it. And, uh, you know, a month at a time. So it's, uh, it's very fast. It's very easy to set up. It's all done on an app on the smartphone. And, uh, it's, uh, it, it's affordable, you know, a hundred and 30 bucks a month or something. To have yeah. The internet more. So I got a, uh, I got a story for you. So we were up at our Island and we're in the screened in porch. It was late at night, you know, a clear night, just all stars having a couple of cocktails, Emmanuel, uh, and, um, enjoying nature with a group of friends there, four or five. And. All of a sudden, we saw this thing in the sky. It looked like a string of lights <laughs> about 30 miles long going across overhead. And we thought, this is a this is a damn UFO, man. We were crazy. We were running out there. <laughs> and then I look up on the internet, and it turns out it's these Starlinks that hook up. Right. And it, it was just, a, a, you know, it was exposed, I think, by the moon or the sun for or moonlight or something for a, a brief period. Yeah. And that I guess eventually they separate and go separate ways, but they were linked up. I guess that's why they call them Starlink, but quite a sight to yeah, see. Yeah, it is. I'd say that that might be the only downside of having these satellites. Is that it interferes a little bit with the star patterns, but uh, I think that the benefits outweigh the negatives. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting. So uh, uh, I was telling my friend that was thinking about getting that guy. I'm sure it gets better and better because we were uh, – we're on the east coast of Florida, about 22 miles south of Cape Canaveral. So, man, these Falcon 9s are going up with these Starlink satellites all the time, maybe yeah. two, three a week, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. No, and the connectivity is amazing, and the speed is as good as it. Okay. Sometimes I'll tell them. Even better. Yeah. Good stuff. How did you get started in marketing? It's kind of unusual, or maybe not. Yeah. You know, I just I grew up one of those kids who, uh, you know, like I sold seeds door to door. And when I was like five years old and then I bought a boomerang with the money, you know, and, and so I, I, my, my working class family definitely connected uh, labor with, uh, with outcome. And ah, uh, yeah, I, I started and the sales part was fun just because it was the kind of the, like the, the excitement of, of problem solving and the thrill of getting, getting paid for that. And, um, and so that, I was just always in sales, it, you know, through my okay. career. And then uh, eventually I had, a, you know, a couple of things happen where I had some bad, bad working experiences. And, uh, and I'm like, well, I got to just work for myself. And this social media thing is looking pretty interesting. So I guess I'm going to figure that out. That was like 15 years ago and uh, 14 years ago. And I, you know, ever since then, I've just been kind of one chapter ahead of my clients figuring out. Uh, you know, what's next on the horizon for, for marketing. Because yeah. I, there's something about being a solopreneur that's so exciting. Uh, you know, I got into it when I was doing comedy shows and I was having, you know, once again, it's, I've talked about this before. It's, you know, you're trying to serve best your, your, your clients or your customer the best you can. So I had fellow, I had a lot of following in the department coming to my comedy shows and they were having to, uh, sit through 10 comedians to see me do five minutes. And then I got into the concept at a seminar to, well, you know what? You can rent your own theater, have your people come pay you to see you. And uh, right. it became a whole paradigm shift for me. Like, wait a minute. So one of my first places I rented out was the Roxy on Sunset, you know, big iconic. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah. so that became kind of part of my marketing right because people said oh you're at the roxy you must be getting really Ooh. good yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> little do they know i'm running it out myself right so but uh right. and man it was so much fun to be uh in the gang world you call it being a shot caller you know you, you call all the shots right so once you get sure. used to making all the decisions it's like it was hard to go back to 
uh, going to comedy clubs and they tell you stand over there and do what I tell you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, right. Plus, you get to decide who goes, who opens for you, and, and those sorts of things. Yeah, and I was so concerned with my audience. So now I knew that they didn't have to sit through twenty amateurs to see me. But I knew, wow, I'm I'm at I'm at like twenty five minutes of material that are really good. That's a good that's a good for an opener or what they call the feature act. So then I was yeah. able to take my money and I could hire a really good headliner that could do 45 to an hour. And then right. unlike 99% of the comedians in LA area, no one is putting money into the headliners pockets like I was. So, and then I've developed these relationships and yeah. then they started hiring me to open for them. Right. And so it's a win-win, right? Emmanuel. Yeah, no, that sounds like fun. That's a, it's a good way to do business. You get to co-brand with somebody who's more experienced. Than yeah. Than you, right. And, yeah. Yeah. And then they're going to reciprocate. So that's it, cool. Yeah, exactly. It's like, and uh, I got in, I always wanted to do radio. Even as a kid, I was infatuated by it. And then when I was going around with the headliner who normally, before you appear at the club, you go in the local radio show and then they, you know, they give tickets away and pitch the show for that weekend. Yep. And so uh, my headliner buddy said, hey, do you want to come on the show with me? And I go, yeah, I do. And so, man, just sitting there and doing live radio, it was very exciting, man, to be, you know, when yeah. you jump in, you got to be funny and everybody else is talking. It was it was really I, I loved it. And then, you know, podcasting opened up. And so, wow, it's 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 great. Yeah, it's amazing. Kind of the democratization of it. Uh, there was a, a company called Internews. I mean, they're still around, but. They were involved in in bringing radio programming to developing and war torn countries, right? And yeah, it was a, a big deal because oftentimes it's it's some kind of a despot who's running the country and only wants one side of the deal uh, yeah. to be publicized. So uh, it's kind of cool now that you know for a, a very small amount of money with your mobile phone you can uh, get on the restream and push things out in, into the world, whatever your message is. Yeah, I uh, did some acting in L.A., and then I got hooked up with these producers. And then we ended up actually, and you can check it out. The storyline's not that great, but we did shoot a movie on the island. It's called uh, Devil's Island 2021 on Amazon for free. So you can check out our island. But, you know, we were able to shoot a movie there even during COVID and get that out to the world. And it's just I learned a lot from them because they are really he had done a uh, HBO movie. So, I mean, he is just an expert on shooting raw and coloring his own film and uh digitally and and, and so it, it's pretty yeah. amazing so you learn from these other people wow. right and they learn from me and it's so uh, like you say collaborative right you're into that yeah and and like you're saying learning and just being committed to to learning whatever the next thing is that you're interested in and i think yeah uh, it's really the secret to a long and, and valuable life yeah i'm taking this health coaching program from this guy uh mark sisson who was in his 70s and that's part of his primal laws, right? He gets into primal, but, you know, move a lot and, you know, always be learning like number, his primal law number 10 is always be learning something new or engaging your brain, reading some stuff, learning a new skill. So I think that's really important. And, you know, and when you get into marketing and you start learning these concepts and these systems and these platforms, man, there's, man, that really bends your brain, doesn't it? Well, and it's, uh, it's even accelerated by a thousand X now because of the proliferation of AI tools and, and yeah you know what actually is leveraging ai and what's just just uh, smoke and mirrors and then how to use each of the tools and uh, so it's taken a while i just finally have found uh, a couple of, of uh, pieces of software that make sense and that are or, that we're using every day in the agency and uh, and finally found some good ones right uh, and good ways to use generative ai uh, chat and, and those sorts of and those things so uh but it, it it took a commitment and some time to be able to to dig through it all and understand it and then be able to use the tool yeah so people want to get a hold of you with their company or personally and you're ahead of the game on uh, marketing with ai and and how they can make best use that right yeah uh, they can ask me questions or get uh, referrals into software there's a lot of good uh, email newsletters that are doing reviews of software every day. Um, there's also some that are like these big kind of Wikipedias of software. Yeah. Three, three, 4,000 different applications. And so you put in your problem like email marketing 
and then it, it spits out 75 different tools that you can use. Yeah. Uh, and then you got to go in and test them and see which one works for you and, and, uh, and then deploy it. <laughs> I'm, it. It is so amazing. I started playing with it just because I'm, uh, they have, they have their own version of chat GPT in this. I'm in this mastermind group with, uh, Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosa, right? Oh, cool. And so they have their own ask Gigi, but it's really just a connected to AI, man. But I mean, talking about, you know, if I, you know, uh, create a YouTube description of my interview with Emmanuel Rose on marketing and it's going to give me a, I could never write it that good, you know? Oh yeah, no, I, that's true. And so the, I, the tool that I use, I actually uploaded all my books and now I just ask it questions to answer as me from yeah. whatever oh. I've written. That is awesome. I'm going to use that. That's awesome. Yeah. Because, I mean, it'll just give you, you know, ideas for, you know, uh, podcast episodes or, you know, what's the 10 most popular search for, you know, categories. And, it, 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 you know, it's like anything else, right? Somebody said that, it's, you know, you could use your car for evil or you can use it for good just to get around. It's going to be the same thing. It's going to be a tool. And you know what? You can, people can deny it or stay away. It's, it's a reality of life. Uh, how we use it may change, but it's going to be a reality, right? Yeah, it is. I, I'm with you 100%. It's a tool and it's not the answer. Everything that, that uh, comes out of out of these platforms, I still edit. I still have my people. Edit. Yeah. Um, you know, it has to be it has to be tuned with the human creativity at this point. That may change. You know, the more the more uh, sophisticated it gets, you know, as it will, it's guaranteed to because it's learning constantly. Yeah. Uh, but I, I have a hard time believing it's going to replace us entirely as a creative force. Seems like that's kind of the uh, <laughs> the people who are brokering in the fear mongering business, right? That they try to really put up that fear maybe and keep people away from it. I don't know why, but uh, it's here to stay for sure. And uh, man, I've been using it just, you know, and like you said, you have to still edit. And, you know, it kind of gives you a framework, really, and then you can kind of tweak it from there. But, man, it, it definitely pushes you uh, in the right direction of what where you want to go with things. And it's using technology to our advantage to create more time so we can get out into nature. That's probably one of the best keys that you can use it for. Yeah, it is a lever that way. And, you know, I'm still using it, like, to generate ideas, kind of like what we're talking about, right? Um, yeah. Ideas, content calendars maybe an outline, um, maybe an initial draft. And then, um, and that cuts a lot of time off. Uh, like you're talking about also with transcripts, you can take a transcript and yeah. summarize it, 10, 10 key points or five key points. I did that for a client and, uh, was amazed. At, I mean, that, that was four or five hours that it saved. Wow. Being able to push, you know, three days worth of, of strategic planning into an action plan, for instance. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, when you're coaching people, do you do uh, do you have do you use any like coaching platforms or systems, or do you create it yourself and just use it on a session by session basis based on the client? Or yeah, we use a, just session by session and uh, use the interview style and and then uh, summarize and then be able to clip clip interviews that they can then use for for their own marketing. Right? Oh, okay, certain topics. And yeah. then, then we use things like Opus Clips to be able to create the shorts. Oh, yeah. And, um, and, and yeah, so it's it's pretty fluid and dynamic at this point. How do you like the Opus Clips? I've been looking at that because I, I create shorts, but it's very time consuming. Yeah. yeah. So, and that basically takes you long, long form content and you get to break it up in a more timely manner. Yeah, exactly. And it, uh, it, it does the work while you're doing something else and then you go in and clean it up. You know, I'd say it's probably like, for me, it's about an 80%, 85% uh, final and then clean it up. And then, it, uh, you know, you push it, uh, push it out to all the YouTube and all the various yeah. uh, snap, those things. Um, and the shorts are a 10 to one watch rate. They really um, are. They are pushing those. I get like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all it, I mean, I'm getting a thousand views on that one short. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's great. The other crazy one is being able to take a blog post. I just did this recently too, and I pushed it into my uh, my video editor, 
and then it created by AI the video that was uh, not just titled, but they had the images and it had the voiceover. <laughs> wow, I'm gonna try that because I saw like where you can actually pick, you know, the kind of voiceover you want—a female—and they they were showing these videos yeah. of the, that they created out of really it wasn't really a reality. I think they were walking through Paris or something. It was like this is not really you know something that AI created. Yeah. Yeah, I've been playing with too. They, you know, like you, you, you call it, uh, what's it called? Generative AI, generative AI. You know, they can really, you can create your background and put in a couple of pictures behind you and all these things that are just amazing, right? Oh my God. So, yeah, I mean, there again is a, probably a two hour time saver, right? Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of leverage, but you have to start out with good prompts, good initial material, and then be willing to spend the time. In. Yeah. Excuse me, editing and cleaning it up. Yeah. I love this. I'm using uh, Ecamm Live. I don't know if you heard of that software, but it's really great. That's what we're on right now. And it is just amazing. So when I get done interviewing you, I'm going to get the main, I'll get the main recording of this totally. Then right. I'm going to get a separate file for your audio, my audio. And so if I have to, and I put it in Adobe, I can bring you up even with me or me even with you. And it's just amazing that I'm going to have that control. So, I mean, it's yep. really good. Yeah, I like it. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah I use uh, Restream. That's the one I like. To Restream, okay. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a live stream. So, okay. a lot of times you pick, I'll, I'll pick up viewers that I wouldn't pick up otherwise that are not subscribed to the podcast. Uh, and then it creates, a, it creates a, a, a file for you also so you can clean it up. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Yeah. This one, you know, I forget. I forgot to mention. This one's you get. You have to have a Mac, so it's specific to Mac oh, software okay. to yeah. use it. So, yeah, I always forget to mention that. Yeah, so that's <laughs> great. So, uh, man, so uh, I got an email. So, from you have a whole team working for you, right? Or yeah, we have uh, uh, project management, and I have a couple of VAs, and we have a ton of creatives. So, any one time, we're probably working on between 12 and, and 20 clients, just depending on. on good, what good. Yeah. That's great. I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm just picking your brain because when I get, when I graduate from this health coaching thing, I got to decide kind of how I'm going to, you know, whether I'm going to go to a, they have a, this, they have a lot of coaching softwares, you know, acuity and uh, practice better and all these other, you know, kind of handles, you know, automating emails, but it seems like a lot that I could probably do just with my email marketing that I already have and I could probably just set up my own system as far as when to and I because I'm going to be mostly doing discovery calls this way and then onboarding right. them this way and so right. I can just kind of send them my disclaimer forms and my my privacy agreements and all that with one little email right pretty pretty close and you could probably do it all through Calendly actually that's what I was thinking I have Calendly and I love it yeah. and it's just yeah. so great and uh I wasn't even aware of some of the capabilities, right? So I, when I, so do you, you use it also, right? For your podcast and yeah, yeah. So I, I had my available hours, which I thought was great. This is, this is when I can work. Right. And so they have these available times. Well, man, next thing you know, I'm doing four or five a day. And then I, I, <laughs> right. I saw you, I, I saw a YouTube yeah. video that says, well, you could just, you can limit how many you want. So I, now I, I got it. Right. So as soon as I get two, no more available. But right, I, yeah, I, exactly. Or, I was so a buffer, right? Create the buffer. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. so dumb. So <laughs> now well, that's I a learning I, curve, right? Yeah, <laughs> but I love it. So now I was able to focus on Emmanuel Rose today, man, because you're my only, my only interview today. Nice. Yeah. So uh, maybe we'll just wrap up here, and I'm going to send people. You have so many books. You have some children books on the. Uh, is it just for uh, the one with the with the uh, grouse? Is it about what was that about? Let's see. That's uh, the secret of the grouse, which is kind of the as I wrote that as the kids' version, of introducing them to to being still and to meditation. Wow. And, uh, so I I started the Wanaha Henry series of these nature bound books uh, for my grandkids, in particular, my grandson. And uh, so they're all natural history and values clarification. And uh, and then a little bit for the adults who are reading it too, just to, so that nobody gets bored. And uh, he's getting older. He's, he's 
turning six. So now I'm starting to write chapter books for them. So we've got the uh, tracking, it tracks the Winala Forest. And then the next one is The Secret Rock. And, and so it's the kids' version of the book that I wrote for the adults about, uh, about sitting, being still in, in nature and then coming up with a plan of what you're going to do out in the world. Oh, great. And, and uh, they're all on, available on Amazon? Yep, either emmanuelrose.com or Amazon. Yeah. Okay, so get them at your website or Amazon. And, and what's the age? I'm going to get those for my grandkids. We have grandkids from five to nine right now. So that's it's perfect. Yeah, so the I've got the picture books are for the younger kids, and then the chapter books are Ah, oh, that's so great. Kids. Yeah, because I want to give them stuff about positivity and, you know, like nature and all those kind of things that are great for them to learn. That's awesome. So I'm going to get those and people – Check out Emmanuel Rose and his library of books because he has quite a few at emmanuelrose.com. You know the links are going to be in the podcast show notes and also on the YouTube channel description. But uh, emmanuelrose.com or Amazon to get these books, man. That's great. And uh, when they go to emmanuelrose.com, if they're interested in kind of coaching with marketing, you'll, you'll handle that there too also, right? Yeah, there's uh, all the appropriate tabs where you can reach out directly to me and I'm happy to uh, have a conversation. Well, listen, Emmanuel, I really enjoyed spending this time with you. And what I like about you is I, I like being around people that are always lifelong learners and they just want to learn more and you have that joy about you. And so uh, I, I really value the time you spent with us and I think people are going to get a lot out of it. And I'm going to point them to your website, EmmanuelRose.com. Any final thoughts? And we'll wrap it up. Well, I just uh, want to express my gratitude, Cliff, and uh, thanks for the work that you're doing. Really enjoyed our time together. Absolutely. Fantastic. And I will leave all the links in there. Everybody, please subscribe to the channel. I know you got a lot out of this. Share this with maybe somebody who might get something out of it and uh, they'll appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next episode. Hang around, Emmanuel. Do a little debriefing, my brother.